Um, thank you so much for coming on, you know, on, on the show. Bro, of course, of course. I haven't even got a name for it or anything like that. It's literally yeah. just a conversation Building. cast. The name <laughs> Maybe that's it. Maybe that's going to be it. Yeah, conversation yeah, yeah. cast. That's it. Um, like but yeah, yeah, bro, thank you so much for coming on. No um, the reason why I wanted to get you on is because, you know, we, we we met at a networking event 100%. not too long ago. Yeah. And um, I, we just connected really well initially. Mm. And, you know, coming from London, like normally when I go to networking events, the first thing I realize is that people from London, we connect instantly. Mm, and there's just that kind of vibe that we get. Same background, same story. Yeah. You know we kind of like, it's just, we connect, like even when I was going to that event, um, <laughs> I, I connected, like there's so many people on the lift. I'm like, where are you from? He's like, oh, London, London. London oh, yeah. okay. I it away, I but so. when you start talking to someone, you realize yeah, he's from London. Same yeah. Same background, yeah. understand story, all of that. Yeah, but the reason I wanted to get you on is because obviously I was I was quite interested in 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 because obviously when we had a conversation when we met, you said that obviously you're in a corporate world mm -hmm, and whatnot, mm -hmm. but you were kind of a bit um, you weren't really too keen on pursue, like you know continuing Sold on the corporate world. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. you obviously had you know your perspectives and, and a bit of experience, and I just thought it'd be quite interesting to you know mm. get you in here and get you know your experience of kind of living in London and how you managed to mm. you know and where, where did you say you're from again? Was it Brixton? Bermondsey, Bermondsey, Bermondsey. Bermondsey. So around East Street Market area, LDS yeah. estates. So I grew up and then moved over to Kent. Yeah. That was like a couple of years back, and then Kent. That's how I networked. Went to deep, like a decent school, grammar yeah. school, all of that. Uh, but it was always a fight. It was always a fight, and uh, yeah, yeah, got there in the end. And what was it like? Like you know, take take us all the way back. We, you know, where are you from? Cool. Tell us about yourself. You know, where are cool, you from cool, originally? Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I grew up in Bermondsey, so that's southeast London. For you know, around I don't know if it's gentrified at the moment, but it's like Ellsbury Estates. You can check yeah. that out. Um, I grew up, and then for me, I guess like every kid just wanted to kick ball. Yeah, um, kick ball, become famous. I think football was the easy way out. And um, I realized I was good, but not that good. Um, yeah. And luckily I had African parents and you know, African parents, you're only allowed to do a couple of things. It's a doctor, a lawyer, <laughs> an engineer, yeah. or yeah. a failure. <laughs> yeah. So obviously I just, um, initially I was going to do medicine, which was my parents' dream. Mm. And then it got to a place where I realized, you know what, like, it's not so much the blood. Like I was, all, I was good in school, I was good in school, but I don't think I wanted to pursue that. So I said, what makes the most money? Yeah. So um, let's let's reverse it a bit. So I moved over to Kent. So I lived in Kent. Yeah. And then my perspective begin, began to change because I went to a school and not everyone looks like me. And what I mean by that is yeah. I went with different, I went from a predominantly black school to seeing people of all races, predominantly white. And I think from that perspective, I was able to just change the way I think because I viewed the world differently. I was seeing people that were different from me. And um, yeah, from then on, it was just like, school was always the pinnacle. That was the way out. So it's just yeah. do well in the SATs, do well on GCSEs, do well on A-levels. So I, I went to a, a random school, um, a comprehensive school. I think it's changed by the name, but it's called Iris School. I went there and then, yeah, I just had the parents where when you were doing your parents' evening was always a scary time, so I had to deliver yeah. grace. So where I was out with the boys, I always wanted to kick ball, just get up to mischief as you would. I knew that. I had to deliver from an academic front. So that kind of pushed me on to, to do really well. And yeah, I've done okay. Yeah. I managed to move over to a grammar school. From then on, I studied at the University of Warwick. Um, yeah. So I did an engineering undergrad there, four year engineering undergrad there. And when I got to Warwick, I just realized this frantic uh, kind of attitude towards investment bank. I didn't really know what it was. Yeah. But for me, the way I work is I set my goal. I wanted to make money or being a career to give me choices, right? To give me options. So I reverse engineered and I said, what do I need to get to investment banking? So that was obviously getting the A-levels, going to a top university, getting uh, a 2-1 or above, and then obviously landing internships. I've done a couple of internships. Done one at Goldman yeah. Sachs, yeah. done one at Deutsche Bank, and obviously been in investment banking since. And um, yeah, I think it's very different. The journey, they always say enjoy the journey because it's very different when you get there. And I'm not saying, yeah. I'm not preaching that I'm, I'm there, but mm. being there now and being in the industry, I have a different perspective on life and how I want to use my time. Yeah. So that's probably why we had that conversation and you saw I wasn't sold because I think people from outside looking in, you want to get to that destination. But yeah. when you get there and you see what it really is, then you understand, okay, like, it's great, but do I see myself doing this for X number of years? How do I best utilize my talent? Did I enjoy the journey more than yeah. actually being a destination? So that's really it, bro. Got you, yeah. Mm. And when you said you went, um, you know, going back to um, school, you said when you moved school, you said it was, it, it, you, you thought differently and your mindset shifted. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what, what do you think 
contributed to that mind shift? Like, was it a why? What, what was your mind like before mm, and after, mm. like, you know, that transition? 100%. I just think it's what I saw. So, going back, everyone was in the same, let's say, a span of wealth. Yeah. And everyone was in the same uh, span of wealth, i.e., everyone had the same opportunity. So people, parents, the people, the friends around me, their parents didn't have the nicest cars. We all lived in like council estates. So that's all I knew, right? Yeah. Outside of TV, that's all I saw. So I wouldn't say I set my limits there, but I didn't know any better. But when I now moved over to a different school and then I saw my friends and their parents were driving nice cars and mm -hmm. obviously you begin to net, you know, network. <laughs> I need to get out of my mind. But you begin to go yeah. to your friend's house and you see, okay, his house is like a three, four, five bedroom. Yeah. His parents got a couple of cars. He always has the latest trainers. What is his parents doing differently? And I'm not taking any anything. My, my parents done brilliantly because they migrated from Nigeria yeah, yeah. with nothing to build. But I think it was more, it was just comparative and I was able to look at this lifestyle here this lifestyle there and it was like okay what can i do to get to that stage so it began to open my mind and i was just always inquisitive and then i think this so so the first thing i would say is network and then in conjunction with that also friends as well because i met there was there was a period where a lot of people were migrating or moving from kind of inner southeast london to kent for quote a better life you know their parents had saved up a, a certain amount of money yeah. and they moved over the area and so i had a good group of friends that also were highly motivated and said, you know what, we want to, our, our goals were kind of limited in the sense that we wanted to drive this car by a certain age. Mm. And so, like I said, we now ask the questions and reverse engineered and say, what do we need to get there? And we're just asking. We were like every insight day researching what paid the highest job on Google if you weren't a footballer or a musician. <laughs> yeah. And then once yeah. we found out, we literally just reverse engineered and tried to like get there. So it's a case of being in, changing my environment and then also meeting different people that I haven't ran into before. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the shift in environment, like mm -hmm. how detrimental was that to kind of you becoming and, you know, working in investment banking and whatnot? Was that quite like, because obviously I, I keep going yeah. back to like growing up in London, like is, mm -hmm. I think the toughest thing is like pushing away the environment around you Mm. and resisting all the urges to get that quick money to get yeah, yeah, you know yeah. to, to, to get yourself involved in mm -hmm, things that mm -hmm. kind of you know 100% 100% so what was like the like you know uh, was that was you moving the like the biggest was that kind of the most detrimental thing to you becoming an investment banker or were you what you know what, what, what do you think I wouldn't say it's a detriment I would say it's a positive for two things I'd say moving at this stage I moved meant that I wasn't molded in a way to make that fast money. Yeah. And then the second thing, I'm not even going to take away kind of the praise, but parents played a big yeah. role. It was like my dad strict is, yeah, African parents yeah. tend to be perceived as strict, but I think for him, he always preached education is a route that can bring you. And from seeing him when he broke down, he sat me one day and he said, this is how I, you know, he told me his life story and he used to wake up early hours, 5, 6 a.m., carry water on his head before he even went to school. Couldn't afford to go to school, but he was a runner. Mm. And so because he was a runner, he was able to go to like a really good school, really, really far away, he was able to break away. And once I saw his story and the fact he had gone here, I said, okay, if I'm able to work hard as well in a op land of opportunity, because the UK is very different from Nigeria, yeah. I can definitely create a different life. So I think my parents were a great influence, obviously my faith, as well, I'm a Christian, that really helped. And just me as someone, I think I always wanted to stand on my own two feet. It, yeah. Just that life never really um, attracted me, you know, even yeah. though, you know, people were making fast money, never really attracted me because it comes with the, that risk. Yeah. And whilst, it's funny because my a appetite for risk has changed, right? Because education, although it's tough, it's quite a safe risk. Yeah. Go, perform well, get a good job. It's quite a safe bet. and. Now, obviously, I'm pursuing different things, which are, my risk has changed. But I think back then, I just wanted to go for the safe um, route that allowed me to live a life that I thought I wanted. And yeah. so I'd say a big thing is my parents and then just me as my mindset, really. Yeah. Mm. And how would you encourage like somebody with mindset? Like That's obviously something that's like, mm. you, you could talk about mindset. 100%, how yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you encourage someone, like, let's say they're not in a great position at the moment. Mm. What, what steps did you take to, you know, get into the right mindset and like sometimes you're blind to the opportunities in front of you mm, mm. and I think that relates to back to your mindset a lot like you know with parents especially I think you can get that push from your parents yeah, yeah, yeah. and it can either make you or break you 
Mm. So w- what would you say to someone? Like, how would you encourage them to kind of, you know, shift their mindset if they're not in a hundred percent, hundred percent. I think the other thing is awareness. You have to be aware. Of That's your it. Mindset. Awareness is key. You don't know yeah. what you don't know, right? Yeah. yeah. I would say the best way to for me to think of this is, if I was back in that situation, how would I think today? And I think the first thing is set a goal. And it sounds very, you know, everyone says it, it sounds very cliche, but set a goal. So I want to become an investment banker and then reverse engineer. So you have that goal there. Yeah. What steps do I have to take? Because if you focus on, I think someone said, focus on the X, Y, Z problem, not the ABC. If you focus on the little steps in mm-hmm. between, you're not actually going to focus on the whole goal. And so for me, I would then reach out to people and ideally reach out to people from the same circumstance. So we live in a world where social media, LinkedIn, for example, and that's a fantastic opportunity of network. It's free. Yeah. So you literally go on, you know, you can research people that, so when I was initially getting into banking, right, or even university, I would look for people who had gone through the same school or from South London, or sometimes I'll be, I would even look at their name and think, okay, that's a Nigerian name. You know, whatever I could do as a way to get in and just literally present myself as this humble, hungry person mm. that's eager to learn um, and then network. So I would say network is definitely a, a great opportunity. Obviously we met through a networking yeah. event. That was fantastic. And I think turning up in person because I think the pandemic has meant that everything is virtual, but there's always that element of meeting. Like I could have messaged you, you could have messaged me, mm. but the fact that I was able, because the turnaround was quite quick from when you wanted me to come here, but the fact yeah. that we had met and we built that good rapport meant that I felt that I could definitely make that sacrifice and likewise with you yeah, yeah. to do this turnaround. So I'd say definitely network and then just be there in person. Do you know what I mean? Ask certain questions. The internet has got everything in terms of the steps you need to be. And honestly, if you set your goals high enough, there's no limitations. So for me, I definitely say like, be aggressive, be relentless, network, speak to people, go to different events, turn up. You know, I I saw something on LinkedIn. I don't know if I would do it, but I saw something on LinkedIn, which was crazy. It was a picture of a guy and he literally had, I graduated with a 2-1. Do you remember that? Yeah. And he got a job and there's another guy, don't know his name, but he didn't go to, so with investment banking, sometimes, not all the time, they they, they say something, you have to go to a target six, Mm -hmm. which is Oxford, Cambridge, LSC, UCL, Warwick. And it's not to say people outside those unis, people outside those unis get him, but those are the the, the target six yeah. um, universities that they say. And like, I know someone else who didn't go to those target six, but he did an unorthodox thing where he went around to like, I think it's St. John's Wood or one of these affluent areas and literally knocked on the door. How did you get to the position? How did you drive those cars? And some people are going to turn you away, but it's more so he had the courage to do that and then someone who saw that ambition in him, saw that he was hungry, took him in and was able to help him. And now he's in an elite corporate job. So I think sometimes taking action and moving your fears aside mm-hmm. and really going for it, you know? I think it's about uh, going to the point about the uh, when he was standing in front of the, um, I think in front of the building with his mm. CV. I yeah. Think, I think, do you know what it is? It's a tough one. Like the, I think the older you grow, right? Yeah. yeah. The more you know, Mm, the more mm. you're conscious about, 100%. the more you're aware about. Yeah, yeah. And I think people need to learn how to cut off those limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs, that's those it. Those limiting beliefs that's whereby it. You, you've got this, you, you've, you, you've spent X amount of years in education, mm-hmm. but during that process, not only have you learned how to be great, mm-hmm. you also learned how to stand back Mm. let other people take what's in front like, 100% yeah, it's, it's the system is sometimes comply, the way you bro- to be, comply, comply yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, don't want to make too comply. much noise yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I just think like it, people just need to go out there and get it 100% like, when I tell people what I do right because I'm I'm 21 mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I keep going about it like because there's this this physical barrier that people put in between at what you can do between what age 100% oh, at, at 21 you should be studying and trying to do well and mm-hmm, then after mm-hmm. 21 what do you do you um you know, you get a good job, find yeah. a partner. Shit, bro. Mm. I don't want to do that, bro. Mm. I want to do what I want to do. Write your own rules. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Yeah, I yeah. think the thing, is that the, um, the biggest thing I heard is that you got, you, you, life, your, your life is a book, right? Mm-hmm. And today, it's already been half written. Or you, we mm. don't even know how, how much Yeah, we don't written. have time. It's scary when you think but about it. from now that, going yeah. forward, yeah. you can take the pen and write it how you want to. Mm. Because before, you were letting other people write your, write your story. Mm. You mm. were letting other people... Or what society could, expects of you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah 100%. You're, now you can, take, you can take the pen mm. and write exactly what you want to write and yeah, how you want to write and determine your own... 100%. You know, what you do, how you do it, and mm. X and X. Mm. Going forward, with, um, with investment banking, um, mm. when, you got, when, you, when you first started, 
it's obviously a big corporate world and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, how yeah. did you how did you find it initially? Was it quite tough to to break into and, mm, and be comfortable? Mm. Yeah, so in terms of breaking into it was crazy. Like I say like I went to university to get a job and then everything was secondary. I.e. like everyone can attest, like you go there because the way it's structured is from the very first year, whether you do a free or third year, for the first year you do something called a spring insight week. So if you get in through that and that the way that's structured is it's one week where you get an introduction into a bank yeah. and you, you meet some people's networking, they maybe pay for a hotel for you to travel and you understand what it's like because there's the law of the job, but there's actually what it it, it it requires from a day to day. It's very, very different, right? And it requires a certain skill set. So you do that in your first year. Then if you perform in that, yeah. let me even take you back. Before you get that, you have to send a cover letter. You have to send your CV. You have to do numerical tests. You have to do four or five interviews. So you come into university, you're doing a degree. You don't know anything about this. You just see this shiny thing called investment banking. So I feel like whilst I had my degree, I felt that that was a degree in their own. And so I was studying to get that. So once I've done that, I've got this spring internship. Then if you perform well, you now get selected for summer interviews. And then that sometimes involves going to an assessment day. So that's a range of interviews, case studies, numerical tests, group tests. And then you do the summer internship, which is in your third day. So the summer internship is basically an insight into the jobs, like 10, 10, 10, 11 weeks, 9, 10 weeks. And you basically, you live in London and you do the day-to-day -day, uh, responsibilities of investment bankers. So in my case, working in the M&A team, so it'd be, I have certain responsibilities. That could be doing some PowerPoint presentations, doing some Excel analysis, doing some research. Obviously they ease you in, but the whole point they want to see is, how does this guy start and how does that finish? And is this guy, has he got the stamina and the skills to be able to grow because it only gets harder? Because you think of a summer, right? Yeah. Summer's quite relaxed. It's not indicative of what it's really, really going to be like. So to answer your question, I had a bit of a taste because I'd gone through what it was. I'd gone through that process prior to getting in, but it still wasn't easy. I did a number of internships before I landed it. And then, yeah, when I got there, I think money aside, I said, okay, this is my life. I think what made it tough is the hours. It's not a traditional nine to five. You know, I do, you know, I've told you kind of mm -hmm. privately, but you do anything from sometimes 15, 16 hours a day because you think of it, you're working with, uh, multi-million dollar companies on big deals. Yeah. You know, if you want to get something over the line, let's use for illustration purposes, Coca-Cola and Pepsi, we're going to merge to wait one massive uh, conglomerate. Yeah. Now, do you think you're going to sign off at five because, you know, you finish at five, do you think you're going to sign off and leave this multi-billion dollar? No. You know, that's kind of what you've signed up to. So I think that was the unique challenge. I think shifting from going to a very structured university program to working very long hours and you're working on multiple projects and having to produce yeah. high quality work and having little sleep that was tough but yeah i just think my personality is to kind of be among the best and that's what i thought was the best and and to work hard and persevere so i kind of just went with the flow yeah i enjoyed it i think it taught me one of the good things i would still say even though you know i'm planning for, for different things i'll probably say it's one of the best things to start on for your career because all i know is to work very very hard right mm. so for example i'm working on a separate project i'm working with developers currently building an mvp for me and like i messaged him it's bank holiday i messaged we were up messaging till like late today's monday we were messaging till sunday in the early hours and that's not normal i don't do it all the time but yeah. it was just normal for me he sent me an email i wanted to get it back to him as quick as possible it was normal for me but that's because the mindset i've got from banking it's taught me to always be switched on and obviously it can be detrimental to other aspects of life obviously relationships stuff like that but in terms of being switched on at work is very very good because you become proficient you have to be very switched on at an early age you're dealing with corporates cfo ceos multi-billion yeah. dollar companies so i think from a skill set it's important but i think in terms of where i am now i look at the seniors in there and i look at myself and i say do I want to be there in a couple of years? Or I look at my skill set and say, what do I enjoy doing? And how do I bring what I enjoy doing versus my business acumen to do something I'm passionate about where I don't think of it as a job. I think it's as an enjoyment mm -hmm. and it's given me the choices for later on in life. But I think it's a great foundation um, mm -hmm. in terms of building me, building mm -hmm. me up for sure. Yeah.
I totally agree. I mean, I think going back, I, I was going to make a point on the working mm. thing. Like, do you know when people, like, do you know this idea of being your own boss? Mm. I get it. Look, man, everybody wants to make decisions, Everyone, right? Yeah, everybody yeah. wants to be the person who, mm. you you know, is a decision maker. Yeah, is, yeah. You know, it's very, you're accepted, mm, mm. you're wanted. Yeah, like, yeah. people call you, you know. Yeah. And I feel like it's there's such a, a misconception mm. with being your own boss. 100%. 100%. When you're when you are your own boss, right? You have more responsibility than you mm. will have at any job. Hundred <laughs> percent. People don't understand that. People don't understand. People, people think understand. that when you're your we like you know I've seen people you know work two three hours in their business mm. and post it everywhere, mm. everywhere. Yeah. They've never you know they've not even tried to apply for a job. They've mm. never pushed themselves beyond mm-hmm. what they what they think that they can achieve mentally. And I'm a soul believer. Like, I believe that you you know. What you believe is what you, you you end up you know you end up doing like mm. what you put into this world is what you know hundred percent is what you get. But when you go into a job, mm. you will learn some skills that you will never learn if 100%. you just want to be strictly your yeah, own boss. Yeah, yeah. Like when you, I I personally think that pe- the route people should take is like as soon as you hit sixteen, go get sh- go get a rubbish job, mm. go get a bad job, mm. and work your way up. So you had a did you have a job at sixteen? When I was fifteen, bro. Mm. When I was fifteen, I used to work as a waiter in the airport. Mm, that's but busy. I was awake. When I was in the okay. airport, I wasn't just a fifteen-year-old that went to work. Yeah, I was fifteen yeah. and eight, uh, eight months because you get your national insurance yeah. card at that age. Mm-hmm. So the minute I went, I went to work. I was awake. Mm. I was like, this isn't just a a, a paycheck for me. Mm. This is where I learn mm. the reality. But that's but perspective because people don't see is, it like that. That is, 100%. but you, what I was told. So I actually got the job via like a family member, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they said to me, "I want you to come to this job and see." reality mm. see what people are doing out here he to had survive. the foresight to do that That's but the thing. luckily yeah. i i i gripped on to those words mm. and then i realized i was going in but i was waking up i was fi- listen 15 eight months i had friends that were playing playstation three in the morning four in the morning mm-hmm. right mm. i was getting to be up innit? i was up i was yeah. already at the bus stop bro by the yeah. time i got to work four five my shift finishes two mm. one depending on, obviously on the shift cycle yeah yeah but that during that time, I learned that it's hard. Hundred percent. I learned to value money that time. Mm. I, when I got my first check, I wrote, wow, I just worked so long, mm. and this is all I've got right. And obviously, That's back nice. then, I made uh, I made a couple grand during. Mm. That, but I was like three, four months I was working. Mm. I made a couple grand, but mm. during that time, I learned exactly what it takes to make that to money. Make it. It's trading your time, and I money. valued that like money. 100%. I understood that. Look, this yeah, is yeah. is hard work. Yeah. Whereas everybody around me, mm. nobody understood the value of money because mm. they didn't have to work for it. 100%. And I remember, and then I started getting a little bit, uh, I was I was a bit closed off with where and how and what mm, I spend on. Mm, mm. Like I was saving, like I was strictly like no sh- no sugary drinks. I was still going to school because obviously you're at school at 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I That's wouldn't go though, out to no eat. No sugary drinks, like you won't buy from Do you know what? It got, to, it got to the point where I was so obsessed with saving money. I used to get pocket money. I wouldn't eat the whole day. I'd get home. I have oh. a yellow. I have a yellow box at home, like mm. a little piggy bank, and mm. I've just I've I've saved every coin, every note wow. for the last few years. So when, mm-hmm. obviously, people tell me, "Oh, wow, you're in such a good position. You've you've done mm. so well for yourself." Mm. But I'm thinking this goes back years, years, years. five years ago. Yeah, this yeah. is when I started. Like my mentality yeah, shifted. Yeah, yeah. And back then, I actually didn't. There was no. I wasn't watching any podcast, any you know, any any mm. valuable like valuable that means videos. It was intrinsic though. That means you're. Yeah. Your family member obviously had a word with you, and you just clicked on. Obviously, not a lot of people. I like that. I.e., yeah. some people don't have that support system. Yeah. And then some people don't have that mindset because you could have had that support system, but it was up to you to take his instruction and yeah. make it action. So I think that comes with your experience as well. Mm-hmm. When you come from a family where you don't have everything, Humble beginnings. You, yeah. Like you said, mm-hmm. like you see, your drive is when you're saying like the things you mentioned. You said, "Oh, you know, we lived in a council flat. We didn't have mm-hmm. as much." But your shift when you went to you know, uh, did you say Kent it was again? Kent, yeah. When yeah, you went yeah. to Kent, you realised, mm. wow, people got this, this yeah, and just seeing this. my surroundings and, and, and you, comparing, yeah. Yeah, and then mm. your mind shifts. Mm. Your mind shifts. So I think mm. people need to take, like sometimes don't think too much. Take the mm. steps necessary. Take like, the steps, yeah. Don't think about, like you said, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Or, um, X, Y, a, Z B. problem. Don't think about the A, B, C. If you think about the small little steps, yeah. like there's something called Parkinson's law which says that whatever time you allocate to complete something, yeah. you would, right? Yeah. So if you say it's going to take years and years to get yeah. to this destination it will right but if you even break it down to a task if you say like this podcast for, mm. for example you said today we're going to complete it you could have said we want to complete it in a month and then it would have taken on we would have gone back and forth so yeah. I think people just have to have that mentality mentality on focusing on the big picture yep. and then reverse engineering that's my favorite word that's reverse, like, engin- yeah, like, reverse yeah. engineering on the 
the little steps in between. But yeah. take inspiration where you can. Not everyone, some people are in a privileged situation. That's fine. Yeah. But you've got to take inspiration. Maybe you want to go from, you have a very good family set up, but you want to now break the cycle and get a bit more wealthier. Do that. Mm. Or you're from lower class, you want to get into middle class, but take inspiration. And it's all around you. Like yeah. the internet's there. You can look, people have unique stories and ask like, well, that's one thing that has probably been the biggest learning curve for me because I think when I kind of had a chip on my so shoulder, so I felt sometimes the teachers were initially against me because yeah. I had the attitude of I really want, not so much from a behavioral situation, but they set the beliefs. They're teachers, right? They, it's not all of them, but some of them wanted to teach, but a lot of them wanted to go into finance, but they didn't quite, <laughs> didn't quite happen or, or go into something. You know how teachers are. Yeah, and I'm yeah. not disrespecting because no, I have yeah. some great teachers. Yeah. And so sometimes I would say my beliefs and, it, you know, I'd get the impression that they thought it was outrageous, right? Mm. And I feel like you shouldn't, you shouldn't at all, like... So I'm even losing my, I'm trying to think of one teacher, but I'm really trying hard not to. I think when it comes down to teachers, what I, I don't think, I don't, I don't, I've never, I've never broadcast in this part, but mm -hmm. uh, we started a charity. Okay, cool. Hang up the phone and the person. What's the name? That, yeah, oh, the, the, cool. yeah, the charity's like called it. Hang Up The Phone and the purpose of the charity is to bring light to social media, the effects on it on our, on, on children. Mm. I'm sure you go down the street, you yeah. see a lot of a lot of kids on their phones. And, like I go out, I went, I go swimming quite often mm -hmm. and it's the school holidays now, isn't it? Yeah. I've seen, I'm seeing like five kids in the pool, bro. Mm. Five kids. Back in like when I was, you know, 13, 15, 16, 17. Cool, bro, cool. I was swimming yeah, regular. Yeah. Four, mm. five friends go swim, get three pound chips mm. or whatever. Mm. Um, and the, the purpose of it, we're trying to go into schools. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Get people engaged. 100%. And I think doing things like this, it's, it's giving me such a position, like a, like a, like I've had a teacher reach out to me. That's crazy. He said, I want you to help me invest in property. Wow. Bro, whereby I was, I used to be in school. I, I wasn't the greatest, I wasn't the greatest yeah. pupil, you know, like you I had my right. own, yeah, yeah, we all, we, you know what I mean? We yeah. like, there's a, you know, we, everybody had their problems growing up. Like I said, you come from mm. a deprived, you know, you, 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 mm. you, you, you migrate into the country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's different. It's not yeah. the same as when you grew up here, you know, mm. you, you know what's going on. Mm. You know, we like, for me, I came into the country. It was quite hard mm. to adjust. Mm. You know, you got family, whatever, right? Personal mm. stuff going on. And I wasn't the greatest in school, but when she reached out to me, she said things to me like, I went to go meet her at her house. She invited me over. Oh, crazy. I know. Wow. It's a bit of a dynamic shift, right? I know, yeah, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like, one of my friends said, oh, the, the, the teacher has now become the pupil. Pupil, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, and say, I was yeah. like, oh, wow. That's crazy. And, 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 and she, when I met her, she said some really emotional things to me. Like, mm -hmm. she was like, you used to come into class and all, everything, what you used to say, you used to say, you're going to buy a house mm -hmm. for your mom one day. You're mm. going to do this. You're going to do that. And she said, you, you always said you're going to do it. You just didn't know how. Mm. And I... Get, and then a couple of years later, I bought a house for yeah, my mom. Yeah, wow. Ready, good, you know Amazing, what I mean? Yeah, and it's yeah. just like, I had that belief from such an early age. Mm. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I had pure intentions that's to, to make it happen. That's probably, yeah, that's, that's what I was going to get on. It's the mindset. Yeah. Yeah, like focusing on just having, setting your intentions so, I don't even want to use the word, so aggressively to mm. a point that, you know, it's the the little steps are gonna make its way now. And I go back to now what I was gonna say earlier is, you know, similar to you, I had a chip on my shoulder. I I also mm. used to think teachers were against me, maybe yeah. because, like I said, come from London, maybe this cheeky kid that had these big <laughs> dreams and yeah. you know wanted to do something that necessarily because I wasn't performing at the time, right? I was still kind of outside with friends. Mm. I was playing football, so I wasn't fully focused and. I would say now, and then I used to, we used to have study groups, me and my friend, and sometimes we would just not even listen to the teachers and mm. do it myself. So I would like, I'm not going to listen to you because you're not, you know, you're not teaching me. You not, haven't got my best interest. And I'll just create more work for myself. I'd go to the library and do it myself. Yeah. And I got there in the end, but it was a lot more harder. So, you know, going back to what I was going to say, I think it's really, really important to actually ask questions yeah. and be open and say, this is where I am. You know, because there's an element of sometimes pride and not not yeah. trying to be vulnerable, but it's it's really important to ask because you'll learn from someone else's mistakes rather than doing it. It was like people have this thing with investing in yourself, investing mm. in your education. They say, "Oh, it's X it's number of thousands of pounds." Okay, you go and do it again. Mm. You make mistakes, which one is going to cost you the money more than the money of the course, yeah. and two, it's going to take you longer over the longer than the process of what it would have mm. had you got your education. So I definitely think like asking, but it took a mentality shift. It took a 
it took time for me to think like that because initially I had a chip mm. and said I was going to do it myself and I was against teachers and I actually think I could have used them better. Maybe they didn't believe in me, but yeah. if I kind of put that to the side and use them better because they've got more knowledge, right? Yeah, yeah. Why don't I learn from them, their mistakes to make less mistakes? Because it's all about le making less mistakes yeah. on your way to whatever destination. So that's mm. what I was going to get onto. Yeah, I think we kind of neglect teachers a little bit. Like you've mm. got to realise that, yeah, all right, some of them are the way they are and mm. they've got their, you know, personality traits and yeah. whatnot. But at the end of the day, they've got more experience. 100%. 100%. Way more experience. Yeah, I'm grateful. And that's, that's the thing I used to do. Do you know what? Mm. For, going back to the teacher story, mm -hmm. I said to my teacher one time and I said, I came into class and she was doing something with her business mm -hmm. and I said to her, one day, me and you are going to do business. Crazy. Straight it's up. the same one that Same you, teacher wow. that she came to me about. Manifestation is so, so key. Like. And that's what I'm saying. Like It was mm. such an emotional ride. Oh, yeah, not great. Um, yeah, it was such an emotional ride. Just, from that from like looking back because now I've, I've gotten to where i've gotten cool. i've bought the house mm -hmm. i've got you know i've got plans to buy two more properties mm -hmm. this year Crazy. alone congrats that'd be good yeah appreciate it and it's yeah, like yeah. i was just that she do you know what she said to me she said when you used to come into school we knew that she, she was the one that made me go uni mm. oh you weren't gonna go i wasn't gonna go uni okay. i was gonna go to, i was gonna go work and then buy the house through you ah, know my, my pay okay, and whatnot okay, yeah. she was the one that told me you have to go to so I think you need to find a teacher when it comes to school. There is someone like they, mm. there's teachers that genuinely believe in you, and you just mm. have to make yourself a bit vulnerable. Like people have things going on at home, mm. and it's cool. Like mm. listen, man, everyone goes through things. I think yeah. everybody into us. And there's not one person in this world mm. that has a good life. Mm. When you're rich, you have problems. When you're mm. poor, you have problems. They have different, yeah, it's about you perspective. Always have problems. Yeah. You will never not mm. have problems, bro. Mm. Like there's always a problem somewhere somehow. Mm. So have you know have yeah, yeah, have yeah. the problems that you want to have. Hundred percent. I think what you say about teaching, I think the way I'll put it is like maybe draw inspiration from somewhere. So whether it's mm. YouTube, whether it's someone with a similar story. So there's different yeah. people that I look at. Um, there's a guy I'm really into now. His name is Alex Homozi. He's like a US guy. He wrote a book like Your First 100 Million. So he was a management it, yeah. consultant. Now he's got like a portfolio company. The reason why I like his story because, you know, he's not Nigerian, but he's Middle Eastern, I believe. Mm kind of his dad wanted him to do, he became a successful consultant, performed really well in school. Then he said, and similar to me, I'm big into, fit, I'm big into fitness. And he said, okay, I've got there. And there's another person as well I'll talk about. Um, but he made that decision to, how do I bring my passion and my interest to make it to a viable business opportunity? Mm. Obviously he now left and now he's got a hundred million portfolio yeah. uh, of companies. So, that's what I'm saying. I don't know him personally, but he's he's putting out content. Thankfully, he's putting out content weekly, talking about his story. So why mm. would I, you know, I'm I'm very ambitious, and I believe I'll. I'm saying on this podcast, I believe I'll el emulate the same success. Definitely, you know, in, in in Jesus' name. But it's more of a case of his information is there. I can now, you know, learn. Like if I really mm. wanted to, if he's got a course, I'll do it. Or you know, but there's ways for me to access that sort of information without necessarily having a teacher. Because let's be frank, some people are not the best students mm. and their teachers are not great. So they may not have role models available. You know, some people have different family situations yeah. where it might be very, yeah. very tough. But there's someone out there that if you want to replicate their success and they're as visible and they're transparent, the fact that you found them out there means that they're transparent to the level. And especially if they're putting out regular content. So there's another guy I listened to, John Asraf, and he's so good. He talks about neuroscience and the brain mm. and the way it works and why we procrastinate and, and the functionality yeah the yeah. functionalities for me i'm quite an analytical guy Same. so it's like yeah. sometimes i'm not motivated and i look and i say why and you can't always just blame it on how you feel and it's the way you're perceiving certain situations so yeah without getting into a tangent i think there's information out there there's people there's role models out there it's just about accessing and being really diligent and being relentless and you know faith comes by hearing putting mm. the right stuff into your ears like, i love music and I still would listen to music in the gym, but sometimes when I'm driving, it's a bit weird. You see me speeding in my in my car, but <laughs> you'll hear like Alex Hamosi or you hear Les, Les Brown and I get looks and it's like, oh, no. do you know what I mean? But yeah. that's the information I want to put in. And sometimes, you know, that's the best way for mm. me because I've got long drives. So it was a bit of a drive here. I'll mm. put that information in myself rather than music. Not to say music is bad, but, you know, faith comes from a hearing. So yeah. I definitely want to play that in my mind. 
Brilliant. Yeah, man. Dad, I, I agree. I think you got, and I think you just what you absorb is just naturally how 100%. what you how you'll be. The people you're around is what you'll mm. become. The things you listen to is yeah, what yeah. you you know what you kind of value. Mm. So I think it's all about kind of just being around positivity, having you know control over your thoughts. Definitely, hundred percent. You know, yeah. and you mentioned that you're into fitness, yeah. and I've seen obviously your yeah, your page. <laughs> what, how did you like? Did you were you kind of into fitness from, yeah. from young or what? Like, yeah. what's the story behind you that? You know what? I got a thank. It was my boy's birthday. His name mm. is Tyson. Michael Fisher and he like you know I was all the thing I love about fitness is there's sports I played I've played football I played rugby fitness is almost one of those I see it as a sport mm. but you're in control of your destiny and what I mean is mm. with team sports with football it's great like Ronaldo I'm a fan of Ronaldo right yeah. but United I'm a fan they're not performing well yeah. he's doing his job people come to play and say like he's old but he scored a hat trick Yeah, but he has to rely on the team but with fitness it was great because I could I could mould my physique to how I want based on how much work I put in. Mm. So I fell in love with that. And for me, initially, it was just kind of intrigue. I went to the gym probably around the age of like 18. Mm. And then I just started seeing changes in my body. But this time I was just kind of gymming with no education. Um, and I saw change in my body. People were complimenting me. Mm. But me, I'm one of those people that I'm very, very driven. So I kept going. Then I started eating right and understanding the science. And then for me, I think during the most stressful parts of my life, it was a relief. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was a time for me to be with my thoughts and. Oh man. Yeah, it's just Great a time for me. That, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And people see it, and they, you know, they always ask me what's the the goal with fitness, and for me, it was more. I just see it as an ability to take myself away from the world, but it's something yeah. I enjoy. And even when I was working a hundred hours a week, you know. I had stresses at home yeah, and yeah. stuff. It was just my way to escape. So for now, in terms of my fitness, I just put out content currently. So yeah. I have my YouTube, I call myself the Life of Soul, aka the Bodybuilding Banker. So a lot <laughs> yeah. of people ask me how I balance corporate and fitness. And for me, my content is really centered around how you can optimize to be the best. Because you don't, I often get confused as a PT if you don't know what I do. And I feel like you don't have to be a PT to be fit, right? Yeah, if I'm working, definitely. you know, 80 to 100 hours a week and still keeping elite, it's about choices, right? Mm -hmm. Because we prioritize what we care about the most. So people say, I don't have the gym. You just don't prioritize it enough. Do you know what I mean? It's, we, we, prior, we prioritize comfort. Exactly. Okay. A lot of people prioritize comfort. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So for me, um, it's just been something that's been synonymous in my life. And now obviously I'm working on um, kind of a company where um, it will kind of provide people not just like me but 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 employees the opportunity to to remain fit and still kind of do their jobs i think mm -hmm. the pandemic has shown like it's highlighted the fact that people is, people are gaining weight people, anxiety rates are up yeah and well-being is very very important because you need your workforce to perform in the optimum so having that sort of service available by the mm -hmm. employee one shows your employee you care and it's going to improve their engagement productivity and boost morale so that's kind of like what i'm trying to do i'm trying to use my unique story and my platform to show yeah. the practices so there's people kind of getting into the corporate world there's people there and obviously people established that i'm trying to build yeah. uh, something around that yeah i would love to get a, a part of that and whatnot because for me mm. uh, like fitness has been like it has to it becomes a part of your life 100 percent, 100 percent. you have to work mm. out you have to um, you have to hit a gym session. And like yeah. you said, when you get into the gym, phone goes off or on silent. Yeah, you're yeah. Just in there, you're the thoughts go like, away. And the thing is, the, the metric that I like about fitness is that the key metric that you, you can measure is that you decide. You get out what you put in 100%. You decide yeah, yeah, yeah. the result. Yeah, 100%. And, what you, what, and I, find, I find it as like a like a disciplinary session. 100%. 100%. I get in there and yeah, what yeah, I put yeah. in is what you, like you said, what you get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for me, that's kind of been like the, the, the main the main driver for me not mm. dri not, I wouldn't say driver I would just say the main like uh, motivation point like whenever I get into the gym you know you just you, you put all your like problems and what in, into those yeah, it weights goes, especially my muscle workout. connection yeah yeah if you're there you're present mm. you forget most of it and the beauty about it is you kind of measure your goals so not everyone needs to be a bodybuilder as yeah. fake but it's whatever you define as successful so like some people have these limiting beliefs that, oh, I might not be able to grow as much muscle as you or mm. the person they see in the magazine. you got better genetics. Yeah, better genetics. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what? Like, there's a level of work. Listen, if you're going professional, there's people professionals that do what they do. I'm, I'm just talking about keeping fit and healthy and the level where it allows you to kind of breathe and you're happy with your physique. You control that. Yeah. So you don't have to look at other people's. You just need to set 
I want to put on this amount of muscle. I want to lose this much weight. Set that goal and focus on it. Mm. And it, it, you enjoy the process and you're in control. You don't have to rely on someone mm. to, to, to help you in this stage. Yes, there's information, but there's enough information on, mm. you can ask me, you can reach out to my Instagram. Yeah, or oh, there's yeah, yeah. millions of kind of PTs or people that do it full time for you to understand. And you can learn, like you can learn. So I kind of like the fact that the destiny is in your hands and the fact it gives you an opportunity to escape. So I yeah. always promote fitness. And again, fitness is not limited to just gym. You can do yoga, Pilates, yeah. mindfulness, yeah. meditation, running. Like Even me, I'm trying to do a lot more running. For me, my little getaway is I go on the treadmill, I save my favorite Netflix series, I do like the <laughs> Stairmaster, yeah. 45 minutes to an hour. This is That's, that's kind of my cardio. I play a bit of football as well. Yeah. You know how you do five yeah. a side, but... I think I like that. And um, nutrition is a big thing as well. People mm. forget that because what you put in your body also helps your mind as well. Yeah. Helps with the endorphins and everything. So, yeah. And, and yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, fitness. I'm trying to, that's the other thing. Going back to the charity. Mm. Back up the phone, the whole point. Because I think there's a, a very obvious direct link between physical health and mental health. 100%. 100%. And when yeah. you put down that phone and you, you stop watching people's lives and all 100%. this luxury and all of this yeah, rubbish yeah, yeah. you see on social mm, media, you put mm, down your phone, mm. you look around, you connect with the people around you. 100%. Stop playing football, do an exercise. Yeah, and yeah, you, yeah. In that, that connection is mm. what we're trying to basically achieve with yeah. the phone and the charity. Um, but you That's mentioned cool. earlier as well that um, you, you, you're kind of getting into property. Yeah. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Firstly, I want to ask what why property? What's, what's so... You yeah. know, buy a property, like why would you, out of everything that's out there, why buy a property? A hundred percent. So for me, I think we live in a world where inflation's going up. Yeah. And fiat, so just having normal money, your 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 purchasing powers are eroding over time. I yeah. things are getting more expensive, interest rates are going up. So I think putting into a stable asset, and not to say property is the most stable, but there's obviously people doing crypto, which is yeah. a lot more kind of speculative but put into an asset that can kind of grow with effectively not that you won't have no time putting into it but you know capital appreciation putting into an asset that allows you to grow your wealth yeah is kind of my, my view so beyond having like one or one buy to let and i was thinking you know do a number of buy to lets do that mm-hmm. that kind of build wealth that way but again i just asked the question and i wanted to put myself in a position where Work was a choice, yeah. not that I had to continue trading in time for money. So even if, let's say, five years from now, I am trading, I want it to be my choice, right? Mm. Let's say if I go and do a speaking engagement or I you know, do something with my company or let's say maybe if I'm still in corporate, I wanted that to be a choice. And I felt like property was one of those proven ways because as much as I'm taking a risk now with my different ventures, I'm st- I still have a little bit of adverse to risk and I felt that it's been done before. Why mm. can't I do it again? Mm. So yeah, I just learned about property. Obviously we met at the event. Um, I've gone to an, an, other few events where people are doing like new builds. So yeah. building from the ground up, securing land. And for me, property just gives you the opportunity to number one, learn. It's, it's yeah. exciting, meet new people and build wealth. Because once you get one, you mm. can secure against another, yeah, yeah. You start building and eventually, they're cash flowing enough where you can maybe secure that and start buying companies Mm. or it just gives you the option to not have to work in your travel experience because for me, I think money, when I was young, it was about all the, I'm still young, but in my, like, before I turned 21, 22, I thought it was all about driving the fastest car and, Mm -hmm. you know, living in the nicest apartment. But now I understand it's about, yeah, yeah, watches. Now I understand it's about freedom and choices. Mm -hmm. And I think property is one of those safest ways. If you you get educated and understand, that gives you the choice because, you know, you're going to have a cash flow and asset that's appreciating. And people are always going to need to live, right? People are always going to need to live. So if I can get involved as an owner um, and do a few projects, which I'm working on, then definitely that would be... um, that's that's the way to get wealthy, right? Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think for me, the biggest thing about property, hence why we met at the event, mm-hmm. I think the biggest thing for me about property is being able to provide people housing. 100%. It's like, that, that positive externality. Yeah, 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 like yeah definitely. Being able to, like, and then obviously that's, you know, beginning stages, you have to work mm. your way out. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Well, it depends on what you're limited. Yeah, 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 100%. You build, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go houses. shoot for the stars, aim for the moon, man. <laughs> for me, it's about providing that affordable, 100%. comfortable, yeah, yeah, steady, yeah, yeah. sustainable property mm-hmm. for, for, for family 100%. or you know what I mean yeah, yeah. starting from there and then being able yeah. to build affordable houses mm. for people mm. like like I'm just thinking like if obviously for me 
if I didn't buy my property now, and if I did follow, you know, the traditional route of going back, yeah. I, 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 you know, paid a lot more. I, that, but it's probably so, you know, beyond my reach that, like, it, mm. like property is just, and I think people need to understand that when you buy your own, pro- like, a house to live in, that's not an investment, really. Mm. That's not what you. That's, that's a different. That's doing. a different conversation for another yeah. day. Like you want to show the keys, you want to show you own an asset, but unless you got a cash flow in business, if you're still trading your time, you now have a mortgage, a liability. Yeah, yeah. So an asset in a sense that you live in asset, it's going to capital appreciate. Mm. If you want to sell it on, but because you're living in it, and let's say you're relying on nine to five, you have to continue, so you can't take that risk, and you're living mm. the asset. Whereas, if you now do different different strategies like a buy refurbish refinance for example you're not only providing a home you're going to benefit from the fact that the property can can go up in value and it's an asset that you own that is bringing you cash flow but society teaches you like move out get a house show keys and then you put all of that and to be honest like the way the government schemes i don't know if they still have that kind of with shared ownership, the shared ownership and yeah. I was talking about first time right. buyers putting down as much deposit but if you put that all in a residential which is again not a bad I'm not saying it's bad to anyone yeah. but that then you lose your ability to put down a little deposit towards something that can actually bring you cash flow in the future so yeah. it's just the way society um, kind of programs you everybody Crazy. wants to live everyone's their own space again nothing wrong with that but it's what your long-term goals are, really. There you go. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You have to be really intentional mm. about your goals and, and try and like emulate success because if there's building blocks, why kind of... In banking is a term, never reinvent the wheel, yeah. which means if you have a bit of work, you never start. And that's something I used to... I wanted to obviously be a perfectionist, but it's like leverage what you got, mm. you know? So ask certain questions, use the resources you have, and then, you know, make life as easy as possible don't go through kind of obstacles if you don't need to i think it's not so much a lack of motivation and belief (coughs) of people i just think there's a saying you don't know what you don't know there you go and like i didn't know in my head i thought kind of go to a top university get kind of this corporate job get Mm. six figures as soon as you can build because in banking you stay long enough Mm. you make the millions it could take 10 some people five if they're traders, but yeah. can take within ten years. You can you can you can make that. But because through inquisitiveness and through a good network of people um, telling me about different options, and maybe in my personality and maybe being able to absorb, and maybe a, a lack a part of me, because I felt in banking I wasn't myself. Mm. I had to be a bit more. I'd say kind of play the game, mm. play the game with me. I'm really open about my like, my love of fitness and. But you had to turn up to drinks, you know, a certain time, eat a certain way, kind of act a certain way, which was kind of our character. So I said I wanted to create a life where I had choices. But the point I'm trying to make is I'd say you don't know what you don't know. And when you now meet people who open your mind, so that's why even though it's cliche, your network is really your net worth. Mm. As long as you're receptive and willing to learn and you take from people, then... Um, I think that's like that. That's the opening of you being able to kind of see things in a different light. So you might not have the motivation, but if you have the right person in your wrist, come on, you can do this. Come on, you can start that podcast. Yeah. Like YouTube, for example, it's not big, but I recently got monetized. And to be oh, honest, well, I've had different opportunities. I can't say, but different kind of <laughs> good opportunities yeah, yeah. as a result of which we discussed privately yeah, yeah. from my YouTube. I'm still using, I'm going to upgrade to cameras, but I'm still using my iPhone. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean? And got to get it done. Yeah, got to get it done. Get like it that done. could have been a limited belief, yeah. but you know, I'm putting out content and I'm, I was if, on the weekend, I was in the gym. I was being serious. I was trying to go out for a bank. So I'm trying to rush my set. And then someone's called me by my YouTube name. Oh, wow. And he said, I really appreciate your content. And that's happened a couple of times, even in the weirdest places. What? But what if I stuck at that limiting belief and said, it's my iPhone. I don't want to put out content. Mm. I wouldn't have got the opportunity we discussed and obviously direct, do you see what I'm saying? So um, I think, yeah, get past the limiting, but ju- just try and put yourself in different circles. Like put yourself in, I always like to be like, it's cliche, but the dumbest person in the room or the, I don't know to about a topic and then yeah. you can just soak up. And one thing is you've got value to bring in because at times I used to think I'm only the gym guy, but no, because gym shows that you've got discipline, yep. that you're motivated, that you're mm-hmm. consistent. And people see that because perception is reality. If people see you looking a certain way and looking very healthy, people, how do you do that? And then you say, you know what? Yeah, this is how I do that. How do you now, you know, do so well in prop? And then you can you can add value there. So always look what you can bring to the table. And then the final thing I say, when you're networking, lead with a given hand. That's something I've definitely mm. learned because when you get to your place, 
I'm sure people are asking you, hey, you know, I get messages, hey, this and that. And I'm, I try to answer, but if everyone's saying, can we have a call? Like, there's only so much of my time that I can give, right? But I get some interest in where, like yours was, we've got the podcast you want to discuss. That's that's value because I can tell my story, I can yeah. meet you, have a discussion. I had someone reach out to me saying, I'm a video editor, I love your content, I would love to edit for you. Mm. Um, do you have a time moment and we can discuss? And then I give them, you know, tips on kind of their journey and what they want to do. They bring value. So I'd say yeah. always maybe, everything you have to be tactical Think of where you can add value. If you can't, just be like, how can I help? Just show you're genuine mm -hmm. whenever you're asking a question. I think it's going to go far whenever you're trying to connect with with people. And I've had responses of some you know, famous people, blue tick people off Instagram, yeah. literally sending that sort of message. Whereas I used to just send asking, 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 but they get a million of them. How did they differentiate? Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Well, bro, listen. Thank you so much. I appreciate well, you. Okay, this has been it. good. Yeah, I know. Thank yeah, you so much. yeah. You've been so Need more time next time. Like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the thing. See, whenever someone comes 100%. on, we can talk for hours. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's why I thought because the people I attract, mm. there's there's a story behind them. Hundred percent. Talk about. Like, yeah, they, yeah. They, they've got this vision, and mm. I just want to say thank you so much. For I appreciate on. you. Hundred percent.